so once we quickly review these load cases now i want to go to results of uh, these uh, these cases so first review the non linear dynamic analysis results so this building is run already for let's say non linear static analysis non linear dynamic analysis i i deliberately made the color of this whole model as gray gray uh, color you can modify that in the options and maybe here graphic color and then display color can be just selected with all gray colors because uh, the hinge formation uh, will be shown with different colors now when i visualize the results of non linear dynamic analysis so let me uh, go to first deformed shape because the very first result which you visualize after running the analysis linear or non linear is the deformed shape so let me go to deformed shape and now let's select the non linear dynamic analysis case it is the north ridge ground motion let's say and i know that it is a simple uh, load case which is applying this earthquake in the x direction of the building only i can select for any particular time step but since it is a non linear dynamic load case so now this hinge state color dots option is vis visible now so i can either go for uh, visualization in terms of points b c d and e on the load deformation curve or action deformation curve which i give as an input or i can go for iuls cp acceptance criteria representation so i selected a particular time here and then let me select let's say 20 second 20 second at a particular 20 second i click on apply and the program will be able to tell me the condition of hinges in terms of iuls and cp acceptance points on that particular deformed shape so here you can see that uh, just focus on maybe beams in this particular case many of the beams are in in uh, in black color which means that they are even less than io then green color mean that they are in between io and ls and then blue means ls and cp and red means that they have crossed the cp level so this is the this is the uh, condition or state of hinges once you once you have actually uh, run the analysis so you can also visualize in terms of b c d and e points so a color will tell you that this particular hinge is beyond point b or beyond point c or beyond point e uh, or d uh, in, in the action deformation curve which you have given similarly uh, after this visualization you can also go to uh, display and directly go to this hinge results so hinge by hinge you can see the result which you have already you can say defined then you will first select the load case because this is a new form which you have to now see first select the load case so let me select the non linear uh, the dynamic analysis case then uh, the hinge degree of freedom let me select m3 and then story 1 let's say object type can be frame or wall stories can be all those stories which are available in your model frame type select beam for this demonstration because currently we want to see the results of the uh, hinges which we give to beams right so when i select beam then i can select from b1 up till all beams b46 which are in my model in story 1 right so all the beams of story 1 are here so let me select let's say b10 B10 had again two hinges. One was B10 H17 and B1 H18 at both of its its ends. So let me select, uh, let's say B10 H18. So now uh, the hinge type is moment M3 by default. I cannot change that. Hinge response curve is visible. These are all visualization options. Then backbone curve should be visible with red color and the response or demand curve is given with the blue color and then legend is available and current step data if you want to for example go 
from a particular time step on the top here you can see it is 0 0 second is the current step and i can go for the next steps and when I, when i go to next steps by clicking you can see there is a dot which is moving up and down and these all values are uh, changing with each step so all these values are what load step uh, which is uh, the the load step of the nonlinear dynamic analysis time 2.8 second which is also we can be seen here m3 moment which was in that particular beam at that particular end where the hinge b10 h18 was uh, was given the rotation zero means it is before the yield point it is already the plastic rotation so it will remain zero until the beam yield then hinge state uh, in terms of iolscp or in terms of a b c d e points so it is a to less than b which means it is in the linear elastic range or in terms of iu lscp it is between a to less than iu right so hinge state and his hinge status can be seen at each time step right if i want to go to directly 20th second of earthquake i can give 20 and i can see that these are the the numbers are changed so uh, for each time step of earthquake, I can see the instantaneous point uh, with this dot. Overall demand curve which uh, remained in the whole time history is shown here by the blue color. The curve which we gave as an input uh, moment rotation curve is shown by the red color. So this auto defined hinge B10 H18 was given with this red color input curve and the applied loading actually was not able to even yield that particular beam so maximum we reach up till the yield point the earthquake didn't uh, take that beam or it doesn't it didn't cause the the yielding of that particular beam at that particular end uh, which is where the beam where the hinge b10 h18 was provided so we are before io level io level is shown here by the blue color dot then this is ls and then this last point was cp these are directly picked by the program from asc 41 and the red color curve is defined by uh, already by the asc 41 so uh, that's how after the analysis we can go uh, hinge by hinge and see its results so if there is any beam which is yielded it is simply will be visible here or first we can plot the deformed shape and directly see whether it is beyond LS or beyond CP or not. So I can go for any other beam, maybe some beam in the in the roof maybe or ninth story and in uh, story 9 I can go for let's say beam number B, B13 and then in that B13 again two hinges B b13 h1 and b13 h2 so sometimes the demand is very small see here that uh, even the beam uh, the the applied bending moment was nowhere close to the yield moment of that beam so we are always between a to less than b or a to less than io but for some earthquakes maybe it can take it to yield point or ultimate point or within some this model we may identify several beams which are yielded or which are significantly damaged so that's how you can plot uh, uh, you can compare actually the demand and capacity systematically after the analysis program also generates a table going to display show tables and i think in the uh, structure results or where yes hinge results you can go for these hinge status or hinge states uh, these, these tables are available, three of them actually. The other two are for fiber and the top one is for hinge. So that particular table will tell you for all hinges in the model, it will give you its state, whether it is uh, less than IO or between IO and LS or between LS and CP or beyond CP. Everything will be shown here in a tabular form. So you can uh, you can easily count or actually get an idea how many beams are yielding or how many beams are at what 
uh, state of uh, the performance so that you can do for beams but once we understand the fiber modeling for columns and shear walls then we will be able to do a very similar thing or performance assess assess assessment for columns and shear walls also so but let's uh, just keep this particular uh, piece of demonstration up till beams so let me see if there is any other option yes maybe plot functions you can see uh, you can plot any quantity with respect to time uh, using this particular option plot functions option uh, you can uh, select the base shear or displacement of a particular node or velocity or acceleration of a particular node it can be plotted with respect to time all you need to select is the x direction function it can be time for dynamic load case let me select dynamic analysis load case and then i can select the time uh, as the x axis and then vertical functions can be selected by clicking on this small button and then again clicking on this f of x button and there will be a list of all quantities which you can actually plot on y axis so if i click on here see these are all the local level results beam results column results or joint results which you can plot as a function of time you can select that particular for example column force i can select uh, and then i can select which column which degree of freedom which story everything i can fill that form and give it a name let's say pf1 i can modify that also from here so that will be the plot function name so i know that this is a this particular quantity and then i can plot the that pf1 on y axis so pf1 will be the selected function on y axis so now this is that particular columns force for all 40 second of time history uh, during this north ridge ground motion earthquake so similarly you can click on this small button and all the available quantities you can select from here all the results you can plot as a function of time using this feature uh, this feature can also be used to plot the push over curve although there is a separate option in the display menu but let's just select the push over load case which is run already and select it as a the the horizontal function can be the number of step and vertical function can be the base shear for example base f of x is the default function which is already available in that list so i can just select that one so now the base shear is being plotted as the number of steps so the analysis was conducted in 40 steps in this load case and this is the base shear so you can see that as, as the structure remain linear elastic the base shear is increasing with more and more push force but then as the elements start getting yielded the uh, curve become non linear and at a certain point it almost saturate so which shows that the structure cannot take more base shear at this particular this particular uh, beyond this particular loading because the significant number of elements are yielded already and the structure uh, is taking no more base shear with a large displacement of roof so uh, this time history plot function also you can see and then maybe static push over curve option you can visualize if you have run already the push over case so it will directly show you the push over curve monitor displacement which was the roof displacement is on x axis so 36 inches obviously the minus sign shows the direction of the lateral push so it is uh, 36 inches was the displacement and on y axis is the base shear base shear is is the sum of all the applied forces so in the first few steps as the force is being increased the roof displacement is being increased and it is almost linear but as the structure start becoming non linear few columns and beams are starting yielding the curve become non linear and if i push more it will saturate at a particular uh, step and then if i push more it may go down also showing the collapse of that building so we can push our building up to, up till whatever level we want uh, if, but there can be certain convergence issues at large non linear displacements so um, 
then uh, maybe the story level responses which are available for dynamic analysis maybe i can go for this uh, story response plots first okay this is same as uh, for any other load case uh, then combined story response plots that is available for dynamic analysis case or i think pushover also so this is a new visualization which is a combined visualization after nonlinear dynamic analysis you can see or even linear dynamic analysis so here you can see that uh, i can select the north ridge ground motion which is nonlinear dynamic analysis load case or i can also go for pushover load step is automatically increased because i select that animate option and i can increase the speed of that animation so you can see that Uh, this is the story displacement inter story drift story shear and story moment green color color line is the maximum value on one side or one direction red is the maximum on the other direction and blue line is the instantaneous line as the earthquake is being applied so you can see that as the red dot is moving on the actual earthquake uh, history which is uh, given with this load part, load case Uh, you can see that blue line is fluctuating between maximum on one side and maximum on the other side for inter story drift it is the only the absolute values are plotted so uh, you can animate and get an idea about at what particular time instant this shear was maximum and at what particular time instant the story moment was maximum you will find that they will not be maximum at the same time instant several of the insights about structural behavior can be obtained from such visualizations i can also select the push over load case and uh, in that obviously no time history is was given so i can toggle between different load steps and the increase in the story displacement inter story drift story shear and story moment can be visualized with increasing push over load case so there is no reversal of forces it is monotonically increasing loading in one direction only so only one directional graphs of the story responses will be visible here in this particular visualization so this is story displacement uh, maximum story displacement at the end of push over load case was shown here by this green line then inter story drift and then we will be having the story shear graph in this particular place and then story moment graph in this particular case so let me go to okay it is already animated and with the fastest speed so you can see how as the building is being pushed uh, how the story responses are increased and finally uh, up to the last step of push which is i think uh, the let's see yeah it is i think some 30 steps or 34 steps so let me slow down that animation and see how the story responses are being in increased as we move we move to the load steps or increase the load let's say that uh, uh, our push over curve has almost uh, you can say saturate the base shear you will see that uh, let me actually stop that at a particular load case if the load step actually if uh, the building has already saturated base shear at a particular uh, load step you can confirm from here that the as the number of steps of analysis are increasing the base shear will be saturated or logged and it is no more increasing so again i will say that many of the insights about structural behavior can be obtained from combined story responses uh, like this so i think that's all about this demonstration about the results of nonlinear static and dynamic analysis once you have uh, nonlinear components in your model for example the m3 moment hinges in your beams